Welcome everyone to a special video here on my channel. Today we will be checking out how easy it is to beat Pokemon X and Y with just our starter. Before we begin, let's go over some rules. We are not allowed to use O powers, Pokemon Ami, or X items in battle. This is to make sure we do not have any unfair advantages. Number two, we can only ever have our starter in our party. The exception to this rule is gifted Pokemon, which must be dropped off at a PC box immediately after receiving them. And the other exception are HM users. This mainly applies to Victory Road. Now that we got the rules out of the way, let's drop right into the challenge. So, obviously, the first step in this challenge is to choose who our starter is going to be. I mean, come on. Was there really ever going to be a question about this? Anyway, now that we have Froakie, our journey truly begins. So first up is the Santaloon City Gym, which wasn't really too hard after battling every possible trainer up to this point. The next major battle would take place in Lumio City. So after battling everyone on Route 4, we arrived at Sycamore's lab, where we got to the battle of the Professor, and the Bulbasaur did not pose as much of a problem as I thought it was going to. After Lumio City, we head on down to Route 5 and then reach Camperhere Town. After talking to some guy in a castle, we are tasked with heading to the mansion past Route 6 to receive the Poke Flute. Only the owner lost his fur fru, so we had to go take care of that quickly and then watch some fireworks before we could progress. After receiving the Poke Flute, we head back down to Route 7, wake up a Snorlax, and continue on. After making it through the connecting cave, we reach Ambert Town meet up with some scientists, and then make our way down Route 9 to reach Glittering Cave. After finding some prison escapee, we save a hostage scientist and receive the Jaw Fossil, but that doesn't really help us much in this playthrough. After all that, we can finally progress to Route 8 and reach Silage City. By this point, we have a Frogadier, and enter the gym after reaching Grant, we challenge him and get ourselves a second badge. We then make our way down Route 10, and after fighting some more prison escapees, we are stopped in Geosenge Town by some girl and an overly excited Lucario. After defeating them, we can enter Route 11, and then Reflection Cave. After finally reaching the end of the cave, we reach Shalor City. However, we have reached level 36 and now have a Greninja. We are then told to head to some Mega Evolution place and fight Callum, where we then defeat him and take on the Shalor City Gym. Which wasn't much of an issue either. After we received our third gym badge, we head back to the Mega Evolution Tower and fight the gym leader again at the top, where we have to use Lucario. So this is one of the exceptions to having Greninja take part in every battle, as you can't even switch to Greninja. And we then lose, but that doesn't matter. Before we leave for Route 12, we are given the HM for Surf and immediately teach it to Greninja. Now we can progress through Route 12 and reach Cormeline City. Now, this city is where the challenge becomes a lot easier and that's because of one item, the Lucky Egg. You can get the Lucky Egg by going into the hotel and talking to the lady sitting down at the table. She will ask you if you have a strong bond with one of your Pokemon and if you do, you will get rewarded with the Lucky Egg. Another thing we need to go ahead and pick up in this city is the TM for Acrobatics, seeing as this city hosts the Grass Gym. To get the TM, you have to talk to another lady at the back of the city. She will give you a quiz and ask what move does what she is describing and if you answer correctly, you receive that TM. The problem is that you can only do the quiz once a day, and there are four available TMs to receive. But this wasn't an issue, since I could just change the date and time of the system and do the quiz up until I received the TM for acrobatics. We then have to use the monorail to reach the upper parts of the city and battle Callum outside the gym. And of course, we win. Again. And then we can head inside and challenge the gym. Seeing as the gym has a complete type effectiveness over me, I lead with a substitute turn 1, and after only 2 turns, the jump bluff goes down to acrobatics. Weepamel then comes in and I go for a round to try and conserve PP on acrobatics for Ramos' final Pokemon, and after 2 turns, again it goes down. Finally, the Go-Go comes out, and I up for another substitute to ensure I live one hit. And after a Hyper Potion, I realize that the AI for this battle was trying to lower my speed by using Bulldoze, but since I had the sub up, I was able to get an acrobatics off first and follow up with a surf to make sure I don't lower the health of the go goat to where Ramos would heal, and then I can safely take it out the turn after with acrobatics. Now, we have the fourth badge.
Alright, we are now about halfway through the game, but we are alerted to some team player shenanigans on Route 13, and this is how that went. After all that, we can now head into Lumio City as the blackout has been fixed. We watch Lumio's gym turn its lights on, and in we go. Now, this battle against Clement is special since his Magneton has Sturdy, so Surf won't one-shot it, and his Heliosk has Dry Skin, so Surf has no effect on it at all. However, after a Surf, some extra sensories, and another Surf, Magneton goes down, leaving just the Heliosk, which does over half with each Thunderbolt. And we won't be able to two-hit KO it either, so the only way to really get past this is to pp stall the thunderbolts with potions. I know, very exhilarating combat. Thank you. After that, however, we receive the fifth gym badge. After this, we head to Route 14 north of Lumios and battle Kelm where we have to equip a sky plate we found earlier to ensure our acrobatics knocks out his chestnut in one go. Other than that, the battle is the same as the last. After then speaking to some ghost storyteller trying to rip me off of my hard earned money, we reach Levere City and challenge the fairy gym, which we are once again weak to. After one surf, the Mawile goes down, and the only issue we had in this gym was the Mr. Mime because of light screen. However, after some perseverance, we take it out, and then Sylveon just dies in two surfs giving us the 6th gym badge. However, still in Levere City, we have to head north to the Bokeball factory and clear it out from Team Flare, which again, went like this. After all that, we received the Master Ball and ventured onward toward Route 15, which is really nothing special, and then we reached Dendamil Town. We head north of the town towards the Frost Cavern to help out an Abomaso getting harassed by Team Flare, and after defeating them again in two seconds, we received an Abomasite, which does not help us at all. However, after all that, we head down Route 17 and ride a Mamoswine to Anastar City, where we once again battle Callum, where the same thing happens for the fifth time in a row now. After Callum, we head into face Olympia, who leads with a Sigilith and uses Light Screen, much like the Mr. Mime in the last gym. And after stalling out the Light Screen, the Sigilith goes down, and Sloking is sent in and goes down after 4 acrobatics. Olympia's last Pokemon is Meowstic, which doesn't last 5 seconds, giving us the 7th badge. After receiving the badge, we are called back to Lumio City and have to find the Team Flare hideout. Here, we have our first battle against Lysander. And here is how that went. Okay. 
After beating him, we are tasked with taking out the four scientists to get an elevator key. Much like the other Team Flare incidents throughout the game, this is how that all went. After receiving the elevator key, we head downstairs and are told a sad story. But that's not really important right now. We then fight the fifth Team Flare scientist, Zerosik, which also doesn't last very long. We then push a button and almost end the world, and then we have to go back to Geosenge Town. Except there is a problem. You can't walk back to Geosenge Town, as all entrances are blocked by Team Flare, so the only way is to fly back. Uh, which is problematic because we haven't caught any Pokemon that can use Fly yet. So I walk myself all the way back to Route 2 to catch a Fletchling and fly to Geosenge Town. I enter the base and have to face off against Lysander once more, which goes pretty similarly to the last battle against him. After this, we have to race through the hideout to reach a legendary Pokemon. Here is how that went. After catching Wyvatol, Lysander wants to fight one last time. He leads his Mincheo and it goes down to a Surf. He then brings in the Pyroar, where I put up a substitute for his final Pokemon, and then take it out with a Surf. Honchkrow is next and goes down to the Surf again. Gyarados is then brought in and Mega Evolves. Because of our level at this point in the game, I am able to take it out with 4 Surfs, and move on our way. After all that, I fly back to Anastar City, box our Fletchling again, and continue down to Route 18 and reach Kuraway Town. Here we are challenged by the Professor once more, who leads with a Venusaur. However, I overestimate his power, and when he dies to the extrasensory, he then brings in a Blastoise, and after two Night Slashes, it goes down as well. Last but not least is the Charizard, which, well, dies to Surf. We now head towards Snowbell City, but before that, we are challenged by Shauna, Tierno, and Trevor on Route 19. Here's how that all went.
After defeating our rivals, we can now head into Snowbell City. We have to find some old dude in a forest first before he can challenge the gym. Now, our final badge is ahead of us. Wolfric leads Obama Snow, which goes down in two hits to Night Slash. After that, he brings in Cryogonal, which goes down to two surfs. And finally, his Avalug, which goes down to a single surf. This means we now have our 8th gym badge. More importantly though, we are given the TM for Ice Beam from Wolfric, which we then learn in exchange for a substitute. And now we head onward to the Pokemon League. However, first is Victory Road, where we need some help from our Lucario to push some rocks for us. After making it through Victory Road, Callum wants to battle again. However, I unfortunately forgot to record this battle, but I'm sure you can trust me when I say he didn't live a single hit. We now enter the Pokemon League with a level 86 Greninja with the moveset Ice Beam Surf, Night Slash, and Extra Sensory. One thing to note, however, is I forgot to take out Lucario from the party, which is why you see him in the Hall of Fame at the end, so I do apologize for that. However, without further ado, here is how the Elite Four went. After probably the 4 easiest battles of the challenge so far, we can finally challenge the champion. And it's over already. Nice. Well, that's it. We went through the entirety of Kalos, beating all 8 gym leaders, all team player battles, and all of the Elite Four, with only our starter being used. Overall, Kalos is already known for being the easiest games in the series, so I thought maybe using only one Pokemon would give me a challenge. And boy was I wrong. At least, with Greninja. I was able to sweep through most battles with ease. Of course, some battles such as Ramos, Clement, and arguably Lysander's final battle took some extra steps, but overall, I say that was how easy it was to beat Pokemon X and Y with only your starter. So, I'd like to say thank you so much for watching, and if you did enjoy, please feel free to hit the like button and subscribe for more videos, as this video did take hours to make. Other than that, I will see you all in the next video.